Prince Hanley coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure healing, miracle working love. I want to talk to you today about how to recover it all. What has caused you to suffer loss? Sin, disobedience, bad decision, attack from the enemy? Whatever it was, God can turn the situation around for you, and God wants to turn the situation around for you. There are four major points to consider for recovering your loss. Number one, realize there is a turning point, a good future. Number two, do what God tells you to do, pray and obey. Number three, make your past glorify God. And number four, go forward. So let's discuss the first of these. Realize there is a turning point. In the Tanakh, we read in the account of Job, chapter 42, verses 10 to 12, it tells us, And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. And in the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11, it tells us, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. My friend, you have to know, you have to realize in your inner being that God wants to turn this situation around for you. Many times you can get depressed. You can get discouraged. You can lose your hope if you don't keep your mind on the fact that God can do anything. God is a miracle worker. And God can make something out of nothing. God is a creator. So my friend, get that in your mind and let it sink down in your spirit that God wants to turn this situation around for you. He can turn the situation around. Number two, do what God tells you to do. Pray and obey. The scripture tells us in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 8, So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And God answered him, Pursue, for you will surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. You remember this situation in Ziklag, where David and his men were out fighting, they came back, and their camp had been plundered, their wives and their children had been abducted. David was so discouraged, his men were even talking about stoning him to death. But then it says, David encouraged him in the Lord. And that's when David asked the Lord, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And God answered, Pursue, for you will surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. My friend, you can recover all, and you can do better than that. In the book of Joel, we see that God can restore the years that the locusts have eaten. He can take your life past, restore it, and give you back twice as much. Isaiah says that God will restore double to you. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 7, God says, Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. This scripture is primarily talking about the restoration of Israel, but it has a personal bearing upon your case, my friend. You take the scripture and you believe, and if God applies that to your heart through a rhema, through a personal word from God, you believe that. You hang on that. God says, instead of your shame, you shall have double. And in the book of Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 12, return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today I declare that I will restore double to you. Look at the principle, my friend. God is in the business of restoring, of recovering of giving you double, if not more. Believe God, my friend. It's a principle of God. God wants to help you. We see in both the books of Zechariah and Isaiah that God is in the business of restoring, that he wants to give you back double for what you've lost. Number three, make your past glorify God. Forget your past. Don't nurse it. Don't curse it. And don't rehearse it. Turn loose of your past. In the Brit Hadashah, in the Hebrew New Covenant or New Testament, in the book of Philippians, chapter 3, we read, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Messiah Yeshua. 
Many people are like the monkey who was holding a jar with his other hand inside the jar, holding on to a banana. His owner trainer wanted to give him a big reward, but the monkey wouldn't let go or release what he was holding on to and thereby limited himself, and he couldn't receive his reward. Let go of your past, my friend. Make it glorify God. And the fourth step in recovering your loss, go forward. Abraham lost his wife Sarah two times. He lost his nephew Lot and Lot's family, and he lost a well he had dug, which his neighbors ceased. However, Abraham did not dwell on loss. He sought God for direction, he obeyed, and he always went forward. And the Bible tells us in the Torah, in the book of Genesis, chapter 26, And the man Abraham waxed great, and went forward, and grew until he became very great. Abraham consistently, both literally and figuratively, went forward. The Hebrew word gadal, used twice in the verse I just read, shows us that just as a runner paces himself in a marathon, so Abraham persistently progressed forward, recovering loss along the way, and then going to greater successes with a spirit of excellence becoming greater along the way. In the same way, my friend, if you have suffered loss in the past, you need to go forward into the future with a spirit of excellence. By the way, those of you that are listening by way of the Prince Handley app, if you'll click the button that says View Bonus Material, I'm going to show you in a video how to win the race. Now let me talk about five things you need to cultivate a spirit of excellence. Number one, you need vision. Spend time with God. Pray and fast for a fresh vision and for a prophetic anointing. Number two, determination. You need bulldog determination. You need bulldog endurance and perseverance. You can't be a pansy, and you cannot be a quitter. You must be a warrior, and remember, if you don't quit, you'll win. But if you quit, you cannot win. Number three, you need to establish priorities. You need to put God's program first in life. He will show you when you need to spend time for family, for recreation, and for fellowship. At times, he may have you spend lots of time on family, recreation, and fellowship. But don't try to replace God's kingdom as your top priority. Messiah Yeshua taught us, You seek first the kingdom of God, and all things will be added unto you. Now, the fourth thing you need to cultivate a spirit of excellence is accountability. Accountability will give you real liberty. You need to be accountable to Jesus, the great pastor, and to others around you, or even in ministry. And the fifth thing you need to cultivate a spirit of excellence is rest. You need to rest one day a week. This is God's plan, and it's necessary for your overall long-term health and blessing. At times, God may lead you to take extended periods of rest. Always obey Him in these matters. He knows what is best for you and for those to whom you minister. You can't minister effectively to others if you're worn out or burn out. In the Tanakh, we read in the prophet Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 15, For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, In returning and rest you'll be saved. In quietness and confidence will be your strength. You can see also in Isaiah, chapter 58, in verses 13 and 14, How honoring and keeping the Sabbath will also enable you to appropriate the rewards of a spirit of excellence, delight, dominion, and desires granted. Now let me give you some scriptures related to recovering your losses. Joel chapter 2 verse 25 and 26. So I will restore to you the years the locust or the enemy has eaten. You will eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. My people will never be put to shame. Zechariah chapter 9 verses 11 to 12. As for you also, because of the blood of your covenant, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today I declare that I will restore double to you. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 7. Instead of your shame, you will have double honor, and instead of confusion, they will rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they will possess double. 
Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 11. I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they will increase and bear young. They will be fruitful. I will make you inhabited as in former times, and I will do better for you than at your beginnings. Then you will know that I am the Lord. My friend, can you see here that God's principle is to restore your loss? It's to give you back double, if not more, for how the enemy has plagued you. Oh, yes. The problem may have resulted from your sin, your disobedience, your lack of the word, a bad decision, or simply an attack from the enemy. But whatever it was, as I told you previously, God can turn the situation around for you, and God wants to turn it around for you. And notice in some of these scriptures I've read to you, God associates shame with that loss. Isaiah said, instead of your shame, you will have double honor. Joel said, I will restore to you the years the enemy has eaten, and my people will never be put to shame. So my friend, God loves you so much today. He sent the best he had, his own son, the Mashiach Yeshua, to die on a cruel cross stake to shed his holy blood, which contained the life of God, sinless blood, born of a miracle birth through a virgin. And that blood paid for every sin you've ever done or will do. Yeshua bought you back from the hand of the enemy with that blood. Yeshua paid for your sins with that blood. Yeshua bought you unto God with that blood. The precious blood of Messiah Yeshua. It wasn't blood that contained sin from Adam's seed line. It was blood from a miracle birth that contained the life of God. The precious blood. The holy blood. The blood of redemption. The blood of the sinless Lamb of God, Yeshua HaMashiach. And the scripture tells us, my friend, if God loved us so much that when we were his enemies, when we were in sin, he gave his only son for us, how much more does he love us now that we're his friends and want to bless us? Yes, my friend, God wants to bless you. And by the way, if you don't know the Mashiach, if you don't know Jesus, just pray this simple prayer right now. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I ask you to forgive my sin. I give you my life, and I want Yeshua, I want Jesus to come into my heart and take over my life right now. Help me to live for you, Father, and take me to heaven when I die. In Jesus' name, I pray. My friend, it's been a blessing talking to you today. I can feel the power and the love of God flowing through me to you. He wants to restore whatever you've lost. He wants to restore the years that the locust, the devil, your enemy, has stolen from you, regardless how it happened. And God wants to bless you back, and he wants to remove shame, and he wants to increase you and give you greatness, that you can not only be blessed for yourself, but bless others and bless the world and bless the Jews and the nation of Israel. Now I'm going to pray a special prayer for you. Father in heaven, I pray for the people listening to my voice right now. In the name of Yeshua, the Mashiach of Israel, I ask you to bless them. I break any curse that's upon their lives and anything that has them bound. I set them free right now in the name of Jesus. And I loose the healing, restoration, power of God into their lives. Prosper them. Restore unto them the years the locust has eaten. Give them double or more. Take away their shame. Empower them and give them the abundance that our Lord Yeshua promised them. Pakaranda sipo, mariko, nikaik nishtiborianda larbakita, ahita sandorubukundai. The power of God is invading you. The riches of heaven are yours through Mashiach, and God wants so much to work in your behalf. All you have to do is believe and remember again what you've been taught today. My friend, that was an interpretation of the tongue, the language of the Holy Spirit given previously. And so I'm going to repeat what you've learned today. Four points to consider for recovering your loss. Realize there's a turning point, a good future. Do what God tells you to do. Pray and obey. Make your past glorify God and go forward into the future with the spirit of excellence. The word of God is invading your life. Restoration is coming and the miracle-working power is coming to take away your shame and to bless you. This has been your friend, Prince Handley, coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure, healing, miracle-working love. 
Baruch Abba, Bashim Adonai.